gamers all around the world. Today, we're doing the final, the last guide for the civilizations. Today, we're doing Chinese guide. And I'm gonna show you two different situations. I left China last because it's the most complicated civ and it's the hardest one to make the build order guide for because it relies on booming heavily, AKA going for second TC, Song Dynasty, making a lot of villagers and so on and so forth. And it's a save that gets all in quite a lot because of those reasons. So if you're interested in my hotkey guide, in my scouting guide, they're up on YouTube. And also a guide for French, English, Mongol, Rus, Delhi, Abbasid, and HRE are also up on my YouTube channel. So if you want to learn those civs, go ahead today. Let's do Chinese civ finally. So uh, first thing to say about Chinese civ is it is not that good on, well, probably just not good on Dry Arabia, Lepani, and Highview. Can you win with China on those maps? Yes. Would I recommend playing China on that those maps? No. Uh, the best maps for Chinese civ uh, on the ladder currently are Mongolian Heights, Altai, and Hill and Dale. They are very, very good possibly even the best sim on those maps. Uh, they're very hard to all in, they're very hard to kill on those maps. And the later you go into the game with China, the better it is for you. You have Grenadiers, you have Bombards, you have Nest of Bees, which are all really, really good units. And China struggles the most in Feudal, which, you know, maps like Dry Arabia, Lipany, and Highview are very uh, feudal focused maps so that's why the sieve uh, doesn't do too great and also on those maps the aggressive sieves are, are played more so there so china struggles for those reasons so this guide is you know you, you can play this on any map but it will be much harder to pull off on more of the open maps like i said so let's get into it so first things first uh, on maps like Killende and Alta, you will start with deer. Now, a lot of people ask me, isn't it better to start with the deer? Uh, in my opinion, no. You will have higher gather food rate, but you're going to have way less gold in terms of taxes, right? Because every time a villager drops off food or any resource, you get gold from taxes. But because villager uh, food gathering goes way higher, right? Um, they will drop off to the mill less, which means there will be less tax gold to pick up. So technically you can go on deer with six villagers and then put four on gold to kind of match the, the imbalance in tax gold you will have. But I personally prefer uh, going for the mill opener and just getting it kind of safe. But for example, if my bears were maybe forward and my deer were in the back, maybe I would go for the deer because, uh, you know, I want to have food in a safer spot. So the moment you build the mill, you're going to be setting your villagers on sheep because sheep have faster gather rate than berries for Chinese uh, and pretty much almost every civ except Delian Abbasid. Uh, regarding what we're making first, we're making another scout. Uh, so we're going to go with double scout and remind. Uh, just a reminder, Chinese scouts have 30% extra range. So you should always be able to yoink the sheep from your opponent and kind of have the sheep lead. So those two first scouts, like I said, just try to get as many sheep as possible because you want the sheep so they're next to the mill so that you get that extra food drop off. So you're going to go with the scout into one Imperial official into just spamming villagers. All right. Let's go. So, um... The moment you start, like I said, move the, the sheep towards the mill and start gathering. Second scout coming out and now Imperial official will come out as well and he's going to start supervising. For those that don't know, uh, if you supervise the building, it produces 150% faster and it drops off 20% more resources. So this is why this is part of why Chinese Civ is difficult to play and difficult to master is because it requires a lot of uh, managing with uh, officials and moving them whenever you move resources and so on and so forth. Um, the villager that comes after the official, you're gonna build a house right next to, to a TC and then send it to the food as well. So you want a total of seven on food and then you will go three on gold and then rally on wood. Again, I'm not gonna pay too much attention to scouting. There's a guide for that. So you can uh, watch that if you're interested. Again, seven of food. Next one is gonna go on gold. And uh, we're just gonna slowly mine gold and slowly head to feudal age. One thing I wanna say is when you have sheep like this, try to spread them out a little bit. 
but also every once in a while select individual worker what I'm doing here and just target sheep so like select this one attack this sheep select this one attack this sheep because if all workers are on one sheep and the sheep runs out they're all going to do that kill animation on another sheep which is a waste of resources so uh, if you select one worker and you just kill a sheep every now and then it will basically boost your income by a little bit so um, yeah we're gonna get three on gold and we're also going to get the tax gold when it's about 50 you're gonna want to select all the workers drop off and then click on the on the on the sheep again just so that you can pick up tax and while the imperial officer is moving to drop off no one delivers food and you lose out on that bonus 20 percent if that makes sense which we'll see in a second so three and gold um obviously you don't have wood right now so you're going to be rallying onto the the closest wood that there is next to your tc so i'm gonna have uh 50 gold you can see i'm moving the sheep a little bit there so they don't block and in a second let me see there we go I just dropped so these three dropped off and then I dropped off manually with these four so while he's moving to drop our resources none of them or well this guy dropped off but you don't lose the bonus 20% basically it's it's you know min maxing you know getting the most out of your imperial officers it's not a big deal if you're newer to China or newer player don't be too worried about it but if you're maybe a little bit higher level that's something that you can do and with that gold pickup you will have 200 gold and you'll be able to build your landmark now this is an important part about chinese civ and a lot of barbicans i think are misplaced when i watch people's replays so where do you want to put barbican look at this spawn and think about it for a second obviously twitch chat knows because i just recorded this game think about it would you place it there would you place it there to protect wood lines or would you place it there to protect the goals or would you place it, I don't know, here, Kek Tablet. So, Barbican, there's no specific spot where you should place it. You kind of need to decide in the middle of the game when and what you need to protect. So, in this current game, the worst spot to place it is here. Because you're going for a boom, so you don't necessarily need the gold ASAP. But not only that, you can just wall this off super easily, right? Like, super easy with like 50 wood, 60 wood, you can wall that off. You could build a Barbican here, but the TC already defends that point point of entry. And if the opponent attacks you from here to deny your wood line, you can just move your wood uh, cutters here and they will be safe getting this wood. So the only real spot on this map uh, to place your uh, Barbican is right here to protect these deer. This is obviously a very, very good spawn. But for example, if these berries were maybe here, uh, I would probably make a Barbican around this area which would protect kind of the back golds as well indirectly and i would maybe make a little wall here assuming the berries are here maybe make a little wall here so that i protect my berries and then both wood lines and like i said this barbican would also indirectly protect the golds you can even instead of making walls here you can make a wall here wall here and then wall this side so then this whole area is just completely completely covered so um that's something like i said you have to figure out in the middle of the game and i would suggest whenever you watch a uh, high level aoe4 or pro players look where they're positioning their barbicans and kind of see what they are aiming for um at the same time like if my deer were more safe and maybe gold was forward i would just barbican the gold because there wouldn't be anything else to uh bbq so use one villager to age up you don't need to rush feudal age with china you don't gain anything uh, because we're going for Song Dynasty straight away and Chinese buildings create faster. So having one villager is plenty um, As you can see right now with this spawn if I make walls here My TC is protecting this entrance and Barbican is protecting this entrance Which is why China is so good on these more closed maps rather than Dry Arabia because Dry Arabia is super open And doesn't matter where you place your Barbican. There's always a point of entry, right? So uh, you're gonna want three workers on wood and the reason why you want three workers on wood right now is so you can build houses and you can build a lumber camp and later on for wheelbarrow so once you have 
Seven food, three gold, three wood. Obviously, this guy is building a uh, Barbican of the Sun. You're going to be rallying onto the food because you want to get the Imperial Academy, which will be unlocking the um, Song Dynasty. That makes your villager production time reduced 35% and unlocks these bad boys. So, um, I'm still uh, supervising the mill. And we're just gonna keep making villagers for now. We're not gonna be making any Imperial uh, officials. Making a lumber camp. Uh, I extracted some gold again because I need it for the Imperial Academy. And while this is building, we're gonna have enough food. You should have enough food when this landmark is ending or just bit before to make Imperial Academy. And you can actually make both of those at the same time, by the way. You don't need to wait for one to finish to start the other. Boom, there it is, and we're going to use three villagers for the Imperial Academy. Right there, boom. So where do you place Imperial Academy? Hmm. Preferably, you would want to, like, in a perfect world, if these bears were on the other side, like here, I would place the Imperial Academy here, so it catches uh, Lumber Camp, Gold Mine, and Mill. For those that don't know, Imperial Academy makes the buildings generate 100% more tax gold, and the Imperial officials can drop off taxes uh, on this building so it's very it's pretty good early on to have this building in the range of your starting resources because they're gonna produce way more gold and later on you should be building your production buildings in the range of Imperial Academy because every time you make a unit it will generate 100% more gold and then basically you have like a passive um, gold income so yeah um, I can see a noob core in the chat saying you can also play not place houses like a noob. I mean, if you put Imperial Academy here, you basically block off a lot of it with um, with the TC. And I, per I mean, okay, this is not a great spot either. But uh, I personally like to build my Imperial Academy away from TC because it also serves as a gold point drop off. So if you build it a bit further away, then Imperial uh, officers can drop off gold here or there, and there's multiple options. Um, for it so yeah um anyway once you start that your next goal will be to go for a second tc because i'm showing you the two tc song dynasty build but i'll also show you later song kind of like more aggressive or how to defend with uh chinese if you're getting all in so uh what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna be moving some villagers um or, or rallying villagers onto the wood line and what I like to do is I like to build two Imperial officers as I'm building the Imperial Academy. So the reason for that is Imperial Academy reduces the production of villagers 35%. So you don't want to build Imperial officers that take same time as villagers now. Once you have the Song Dynasty, you want to build them now because they're 20 second build time and the villagers will go down to 13 seconds. So like I said, what I like to do is I like to build two Imperial officers now and then pr continue producing uh, villagers as this basically finishes. So it's kind of perfectly timed out and uh, yeah. Um, another thing that I like to do is uh, I like my wheelbarrows early. So I'm going to keep these three villagers on gold until I have 150 gold. And then I will get wheelbarrow and it's going to get Imperial Officer Chrono boosted and the upgrade is going to finish super, super fast. And once these guys are done with the gold, I'm going to move them onto the stone. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just rallying villagers onto the wood. Uh, you want to go 8 to 10 on wood right now with Imperial Officer supervising the lumber camp. And the next Imperial Officer that comes out will go to supervise the stone. And these guys that are building the academy will also go on stone. Chinese Civ, guys, it's very complicated. Um, so here we go. It finishes. We start the mining camp. And the moment I finished building my Imperial officers, I moved four villagers from, uh, from food. Because I don't need eight workers on food right now. Four is enough because we also have the supervision gaining extra resources. Getting the wheelbarrow and getting the Imperial Officer on it. So it's going to finish in like 35 seconds, which is pretty, pretty fast. So my goal right now is to get that second TC going and get that economy really, really going. Meanwhile, uh, I'm going to build some walls here. I'm going to build a wall here. 
just making it like super super safe you can also wall off this if you want so the only point of entry now is the barbican one thing to note you can use barbican to kill the deer by the way so technically you can start killing them off when they're in a good position and uh yeah now we're just going for 300 stone 400 wood and there it is uh, another mistake that I see people do very often with China, they build TC like here and then the villagers will drop off resources on your TC. That's not what you want to do because you cannot uh, supervise a town center. So you should build your TC away from resources like next to your main TC is a pretty good option because like I said, if you build it here, then the villagers are going to drop off food and stone there and that's not something you want. Um, you're going to send the villagers from stone build, to build a TC and you're going to be moving all workers from wood except three to food because your next step is aging up the castle. Now, what I'm showing you here is how to get to, to TC Song Dynasty into castle. Uh, most of the time when you play China on these more campy maps like Altai, Mongolian Heights and Hill and Dale, the opponent will also be booming or also be going for a macro game or castle rush. So this is your go-to build order. After this, I'm going to show you how to play if you're playing against an all-in in a different replay. So, um, like this is basically, as you can see, it's no units. Uh, so un unless you're getting Omega all-in, you wouldn't do this, but I'll show you later what you do. So, you're going to have a lot of workers on uh, food right now. And when these guys finish, they're also going to go on food and you'll be rallying villagers onto the gold. You actually don't need that many villagers on gold, which you'll see in a second. This might be seem like an overkill, 22 on food and only 2 on gold. But we're going to rally about 6 to 8 workers on gold, having 3 on wood still, just to build houses and stuff. And then we're going to have a shit ton of workers on food. Because of the double production of villagers, and they only are 13 seconds each, you need insane amounts of food to sustain that while going to castle. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna. I think I put like six or eight villagers in gold. Yeah, six villagers in gold is plenty. Because remember, all these buildings are now producing taxes, and you can also pull that out uh, from the buildings and get more gold that way. Uh, the fourth Imperial, Imperial Officer will be made as you're aging up to castle and you're just gonna let him collect resources or collect uh, gold. So yeah, as you can see, look at how many villagers I have on food. And I'm still, my food income is kinda moving up slowly. Most saves would be ready to age up already. Um, so yeah, I'm just farming that. What you can also do is if you messed up your economy and maybe you have too much gold, just get horticulture really early. Uh, it's going to research super fast and it only costs wood and gold, which uh, neither of those things are a problem for you. So, yeah. Uh, village, by the way, is uh, basically a house that costs 125 wood and gives you 40 population increase. And you can also garrison workers inside. Now, you should be building villages next to your resources. And the reason for this is uh, if you get attacked, like here. You can just garrison these into a TC, right? If you get attacked here, these can run into TC. But if the gold workers get attacked, they, they kind of have a long time to run. So building a village next to gold here, or building a village even here, is going to help it so that if your workers get harassed, they have a quick escape point by you know from knights or whatever else. So that's something to remember. My uh, food count is going up, and we're going to start castle. Boom right there you don't need too many workers you know five to ten maximum ten is if you're like rushing for something but five six seven is plenty because again the landmarks build pretty quickly so where do you go from here um this is in my opinion the the best way the most economical approach to get to castle technically you can skip wheelbarrow and get second tc a bit faster but i think wheelbarrow is just a really good upgrade and like I always said, I love getting it and I think it increases your economy by quite a lot. Even though it delays your second TC a little bit. Oh my god, my sock is stuck. <clears throat> um, so where do you go from here? Well, China's usually main gameplay is going into palace guards. They're very fast uh, and they can defend and they can also harass. 
You can also go into stables and put Imperial Officer in stables, get a couple of Knights out to harass your opponent. Uh, what I personally like to do is if the maps are more open, I go for Knights. If the maps are maybe more closed, you can even go for crossbows and a Siege and kind of play it more defensive. Um, and you should also get a, uh, what is it called, a Monastery with Chinese and start collecting relics. And having some Palace Guards will help you escort your monks and make sure they pick up the relics. If you're getting attacked, obviously, or if there's an attack coming, try to get Nest of Bees out as fast as you can. If there are no attacks coming, you can get eco upgrades going, you can get monks starting to collect relics, and you kind of have to adjust based on what your opponent is doing. And this is part of the reason why China is the most complicated civ, because there's so many what is your opponent doing, what are you doing, where do you resource spawn, and stuff like that. So, I'll be rebalancing my economy a little bit i'm going to be putting uh like right now you want to put 10 to 12 villagers on gold you want to put about 15 to 20 on food and then you want to put a bunch on wood because you have no production set up right so you need a lot of wood right now to start getting all the stuff out that you need which is barracks archer ranges if you're going for that uh siege units you want to start creating them from the uh astronomical clock tower you want to get the upgrades that also cost wood. You want to get houses, walls, towers, whatever. So you're going to need plenty of wood. Now, one great thing about Chinese sieve is most of the sieves you want to actually collect all the food on your side of the map before going farms. But because you're going to have such a huge boost with the 20% extra drop off of resources with Imperial Officer, you can actually put a bunch of villagers on, on wood now and then go for... A granary, which is a Chinese unique building, it increases the gather rate uh, nearby villagers 10%. So, what you can also do is, if you have a lot of wood like me right now, but you can't really spend it, you can also just make a granary here right now and slowly start adding farms. In this specific game, I would probably move my workers from here to deer and then supervise that while I collect all the deer because that's safe. But I don't really need to go here to get more food or, or go there and risk kind of, you know, spreading yourself too thin. You can already start with granaries because granaries are just very, very uh, good food source and they're just safe, right? Like you can place them super early, like I said. And look how many workers I have on wood right now. 26, 25. So, yeah. Again, if you're not getting attacked, uh, make sure you get the eco upgrades going. And remember, every time you replace the new lumber camp with China, you want to make sure your supervisor also moves to that lumber camp to supervise. And whenever you upgrade stuff, make sure that you're upgrading in the lumber mill that your supervisor is supervising, because then it's going to research faster. So what is your ultimate goal with China? To go into the late, uh, late, late game and have grenadiers, have bombards, have nest of bees, and just kind of basically beat your opponents with better siege units and better late game and from here on out like the possibilities just like with any Civ, but more so with Chana are kind of endless what some players like to do is they like to move like 10-15 villagers in stone supervise the stone and then build a keep on the middle of the map and kind of gain yourself more space uh, but you can also play a little bit slower if you want to uh, like I said a lot of it depends uh, on your opponent as well now let me show you guys a little bit of a different situation where I've also opened the same way, but if you're playing against an aggressive sim, or if you see that your opponent is playing very aggressive, you can adjust build on the go and play basically with, you know, actually making units and defending. So let me show you that real quick. The only sim that I've done like two replays for, for the guides is China, because like I said, it has a lot of, uh, a lot of different options. So I'm gonna skip this first part. This is the same thing that I just showed you. Uh, we're gonna be going to Song Di up to Song Dynasty. Everything is exactly, exactly the same. So nothing changes. So I'm just gonna skip through this part. Uh, by the way, I got a little bit of a more open spawn uh, this time around on Altai because obviously this is a new game. So if you look, my food line is completely exposed here. They're both on open, and then gold is semi-protected. So there's actually two good spawns. Uh, two good spots for barbican unlike previous game where there was only one you could barbican here 
But you can also just make a wall here, right? And that's it, you're protected, poggers. Technically they can chop the wood around, but you can also make more walls. And you can't really wall this off, like it would take so much wood to wall the whole thing. So the best thing to do in this map, in this specific situation, is barbican your food line. And not barbican here, but just get a little, little bit greedy and barbican here to protect the deer and the berries and your sheep yeah, yeah. at the same time. So, yeah. And here we go. You see that? This is protected by the TC right here and Barbican. This is protected by Barbican. You can place a little wall here, little wall here, wall here, and then your whole base is protected. And that's how you want to look at playing China every single time. You want to try get as much uh, uh, static protection as possible without over committing to making like billion walls. Here comes the Imperial Academy. Uh, and this is the kind of the, the different path we're taking right now compared to the previous one where we had 2TC uh, Song Dynasty. I'm going to show you what to do if your opponent is aggressive or plays a very aggressive save and you want to make units and actually fight. So I'm going for the Imperial Academy uh, with three workers again and I'm still going to make the Imperial Officials like I did earlier up to three. Except this time, I'm going to be rallying a lot of workers on wood, none on stone, and I'm going to put two extra workers on gold a little bit later, because the units that we'll be making to defend cost gold, and we want to get some blacksmith upgrades as well. So, as my Imperial Academy is going up, I'm still collecting food with eight workers. Eight workers is a good number for now to sustain your production, and... You shouldn't feel like you're dying or you're behind if you are like playing like this without second TC. Because remember, even if you're playing against, let's say, against English, they're producing worker every 20 seconds. You're now producing worker every 13 seconds. So this is like a half a, half a TC where you're still getting ahead, you know? You're still getting more villagers and your Imperial officers are making so you drop 20% more resources. You just need to defend and try not to take damage. So, uh, I'm getting my archer range up. And, you know, the classic, if you're playing against French or Rus and they're making knights, you go for spearmen. Uh, if they're playing, you know, any kind of uh, men-at-arms, spearmen, archer, you can just go for uh, Jugenu. They're very, very good. They have high rate of fire. They have very high DPS. And they can actually even melt horsemen if you have good enough numbers. And if you're playing defensive with your TC and Barbican, they can kill horsemen. So, yeah. I would say you can make spearmen against horsemen, but they're not really needed because they just do so, so much DPS. Um, so what is my goal from here on out? I'm constantly producing them. I'm going to add Imperial Officer, uh, fourth one in a bit. And he's going to be used to just collect gold around. I have five workers on gold. And I'm just rallying more and more workers onto the wood. Until I have my proper building set up. Which is going to be an archer range, a blacksmith. And if you want spearmen, a barracks. And just to be able to produce a village or uh, uh, houses. To make sure you're not supply blocked. And to get the blacksmith upgrades. Remember, if you're getting like extremely pushed. Like let's say... I get all these deer collected and these berries. What you can do is you can just start a granary and start making the farms as well. Constant production. And from here on out, you just spam units and you defend. The longer you defend, uh, you know, the longer the game goes, you're going to have more villagers than your opponent. And eventually, if you, you know, kill your opponent's army, you'll manage to go castle and you kind of continue from then on out. Now, uh, one thing to note is right now I'm producing normally from these two production buildings, producing villagers. But as you notice that you're lacking food, just transfer a couple of villagers, just grab like five villagers from wood and transfer them onto the food, right? Because you, you do want to increase uh, villagers and food now a little bit because you're producing from three buildings. When you get blacksmith, it's very important to get steeled arrow because these units shoot in burst attacks. Which means when you get plus one weapons, you boost their overall damage by quite a large percentage uh, because of it. Because of the way they shoot and the way they work. And remember, you can also use Imperial Officer on that to get the upgrade faster. If you ever have a situation where, like this, where you queued too many units, 
you can always switch your Imperial Officer to Archer Ranges. Look how fast the units are producing now. Once supervised. You can just pump out units extremely, extremely fast. And, you know, like I said, your goal with this is now you're entering an era where you're just kind of fighting each other. Obviously, this is not a perfect situation when playing Chinese Civ. You don't want to be dragged in these kinds of situations when you're fighting. Doesn't mean it's impossible for China to defend. It just means that there are better ways to play China, which is why the Civ is not played as much on open maps like Dry Arabia, Highview, and Lipani, and you want them on more closed off maps. Any situation for going Imperial Academy first? And that's a good question. You can go for Imperial Academy first. There's nothing wrong with it. You would still build it with one worker, but then you would have to build Barbican with three workers. The difference is, uh, if your opponent is playing a Civ with multiple scouts, if you build your uh, Barbican later, they can harass your workers, they can kill your workers potentially, and they can maybe even block your Barbican, stuff like that. So, yeah. Either going for going Imperial Academy first is also okay. I, I know a lot of people do it. Sometimes I do it as well. Especially if you can get good academy that it catches all your resource gathering buildings. So this is my last uh, civilization guide. Like I said, I made guide for every single civ. Well, yeah, every single civ. I was gonna say except, but because that's what I usually say. But yeah, this is this was the last one. Uh, let me know what kind of other guide you guys would like me to create for Age of Empires four. Uh, whether it's to defend something, to do something, explain something, whatever it is. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. If you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.